superhero film, superhero film, Black Panther. Black Panther. Black Panther. The highly anticipated film, Black Panther. So, Black Panther. I am stating the obvious, but it's a big deal in the cinema world. It's the first mega budget movie ever to have a majority black cast and black director. It acknowledges racism in a genre that traditionally ignores it, and it breaks the cinematic tradition of African people being depicted as noble savages who are behind the times. But if you want to fully understand why Black Panther's release and success is such a watershed moment for cinema, we should look back at the first blockbuster that the US ever produced. The Birth of a Nation. It was THE cinematic event when it came out in 1915, and even if you didn't see it, you've met somebody who did. It reached some 50 million viewers and adjusted for inflation made $1.8 billion in today's money. That means as of 2015, the only films that made more money were the Titanic and Avatar. It was so absurdly popular that it became the first movie ever screened at the White House, Although this might be because it cited then-President Woodrow Wilson in some of the intertitles. Here's an example of one of his quotes. Yeah, the movie was also absurdly racist. It's essentially a three-hour-long clan propaganda reel, with blackface actors and Union soldiers representing the evil North and post-war reconstruction being depicted as a punitive measure. A lot of the negative stereotypes that surround black characters in film and storytelling today are seen here, as this objectively gross clip shows us. The whole plot revolves around black people hurting white southerners, so black characters rape, murder, keep white southerners from voting, and essentially just do everything the confederacy wanted to do to black people, to white people. They're left unchecked until the heroic Klansmen convince the Union soldiers to redeem themselves by joining forces with ex-confederates in, quote, common defense of their Aryan birthright. It's white supremacy the movie. The film is so notoriously racist that David Duke used it as a three-hour-long propaganda reel when he was recruiting people for the Klan. This is horrible in terms of influencing cinema as a space because it didn't just profit off of anti-blackness, it was actively raising the barrier to entry to keep black people out of cinema. Part of why this is so important is that around the time, population distribution for black people in the U.S. looks something like this. There were, and are today, enormous swaths of the U.S. where there's minuscule amounts of black people and a whole lot of white people. Now, this yields itself to a thing called intergroup anxiety, where discomfort is caused by interaction with people considered to be members of an out-group, you know, like black people in the U.S. This gets enhanced by the fact that white people and black people don't necessarily mingle in these areas, and when isolated from the out-group, prejudice will get more severe with less effort. The same is also true for when one has mediated interactions with outgroups, and movies are the ultimate mediated interaction. Think about it. This is a video. I chose the sound, the images, the tone. There's nothing that is here that I don't want you to see or hear. This is all deliberate. So when the clan is depicted like this, or black people get depicted like that, that's because the filmmakers decided they wanted this to look that way. They're mediating the relationship that the audience has with the people on the screen, and the inflammatory nature of this film essentially barred black people from cinema entirely. That's not to say black creators didn't exist, there were people like Oscar Micheaux who made films while black, but he's an outlier and not the norm. The default in cinema storytelling, especially post-Birth of a Nation, was white. Something that you'll notice here is Birth of a Nation wouldn't fly today. Evidently, a lot has changed in the cinematic world since 1915, most importantly, the U.S. had a civil rights movement, and consequently, cinema moved from overt racism to racist allegory. Or, idealization of the Confederacy, as opposed to outright hatred of black people. This reflects an America where black people are still seen as the outgroup by the white majority, but that attitude can no longer be vocally expressed as vehemently as it used to be. Cinema is slowly advancing to a point where black people are people. Enter Night of the Living Dead. Night of the Living Dead has a black person in it, and unlike Birth of a Nation, he's even played by a real-life black guy. It might not seem important, Night of the Living Dead is famous for inventing the zombie genre, not for advancing racial equality in cinema, but let's look at this character for a moment. His name is Ben, and he has a role as the leader of the survivors. It's already better writing than anything we saw in Birth of a Nation. He's a respectable commanding force that the rest of the survivors work with to escape the zombies, and the audience is meant to cheer for him in this mediated interaction. His blackness, notably, 
is never mentioned, and the film took a colorblind approach to its casting. They don't reference the skin color of the most objectively heroic character in our protagonist group, and the twist is that this colorblindness isn't exceptional. Ben is just written like a white character would have been. Quoting Frank B. Wilderson, Precisely because of their placing as the norm, whites seem not to be represented to themselves as whites, but as people who are variously gendered, classed, sexualized, and able. Thus, the threat of discovering oneself in one's own scholarly or artistic endeavors as comparison is not a fate that awaits white academics. Essentially, white characters don't grapple with being white the way that black characters in modern storytelling grapple with being black. Ben, no matter how many zombies he kills or lives he saves, is a black character, and even if the movie doesn't mention it, we still notice it. Think of this clip from Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Just Falcon, kid. No, no. My daddy told me it's Black Falcon. Is it because I'm black and I'm the Falcon? Well, technically, I mean, yes. So are you, like, black kid? Now, they play it for laughs, but modern storytelling has a thing for blackness being the other. You have horror movies, but Get Out is a black horror movie. You have superhero films, but Black Panther is a black superhero movie. And despite not really being a genre in the way horror and action are, blackness is still put in its own folder. This is because, as filmmaker Richard Dyer puts it, for most of the time, white people speak about nothing but white people. It's just that we couch it in terms of people in general. So when black people get mentioned or featured, that's a deviation from the norm. It needs to get put in the black area. Black Panther flips this on its head and makes whiteness the outsider ethnicity and blackness the default, which might inspire some people because blackness is now accepted in the cinematic space, but I think that's jumping the gun. For better or for worse, no film exists in a vacuum. Cinema still gets pretty overtly racist. And when it doesn't, it tends to infantilize black people. The white savior trope is really common, especially in movies like The Blind Side or The Help, which seem pro-black on the tin, but emphasize that they did it all with the help of a white savior who pulled them out from the gutter which is where cinema is now. Black Panther is one of the few films that doesn't play into this trope and still features black people. It made a lot of money, which means that it's safe for cinema giants like Disney, Pixar, and Paramount to feature black stories and just non-white stories overall, and cinema as a space seems much more accepting of black people, especially compared to 1915. But going back to what I said earlier, black is not a genre. Black media gets sectioned off from the mainstream because going back to that Falcon and Winter Soldier clip, blackness isn't optional, and even if you choose not to address it, the audience will still notice it. But it is accepted in cinema, and as a space, cinema seems willing to profit off of it. The question now is how will it be used and treated going forward? Will blackness be exploited or cherished? If I had a YouTube channel, this is the part where I'd tell you to answer in the comments, but I don't, so just tell me to my face instead. I'll be taking questions.